Annie, good morning. How are you? I am awesome. How are you? I'm also hot. I know you are. Here. I know that yeah, it's hot. Well, I, I guess that's a good place to start because I see you on Twitter. You're not you're not used to Louisiana heat. You're trying to force the fall to come. I don't know. I got I got bad news for you, Annie. I don't. It, it may be in like November, December. If you're lucky, it might happen. It's it's a rough go down here. I'm telling you, I look at the weather and I'm like, I step out and I'm expecting fall. And it's like the humidity is like, good morning. You know, so it's, just, it's one of those things you got to get used to. So I was looking back at the trade. It was it was October 24th mm, when uh, yeah. when Eli was <laughs> traded from New York to Makes New sense. Orleans. So uh, there was a little bit of a buffer between the, the, the humidity exactly. and the heat. So you're not used to it. The South is, I saw where you tweeted out, there's two seasons hot. And hot yeah. as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 may not you, you may not be used to the heat, Annie, but it looks like you are living it up right now, uh, as the kids would say, living your best life down here you in the know, Crescent City. Are you are you having some fun in New Orleans? I, I am. You know, it made those. I still live in Jersey, but we had you know we played the Cowboys in the next home game, so I was like, okay, let me sit around this week and work remotely so I can make Eli some home-cooked meals and kind of spend more time in the city, getting to know the city even better. So I'm loving it. I had my first snow, snowball. Um, nice. Oh, nice. What, two nights ago. So I'm super – so that was an experience. It had, like, cheesecake at the bottom of it. It was really, really good. <laughs> so I'm gaining weight but sweating it off. So it, it works. <laughs> See, that, that's, that's, our, that's our productiveness down here. We can we eat like we can because we can sweat it off in the heat. Yeah, exactly. Um. Perfect right, combination. So, so tell me, you, last time we spoke, you had an event coming to South Louisiana. Since then, you've gone to Los Angeles, and then you're going to Chicago. Um, yeah. This seems to be very successful. How's it going? It's going really well. I mean, we are just, you know, connecting with survivors. And, you know, October is um, domestic violence month. So we're just excited to have this event in, in October 19th, rather, in Chicago. And, you know, we play on the 20th of the day before we're going to be gathering with you know, some amazing women and just having a great time and just helping them to just reset, recharge, and just rediscover their joy as they rebuild their lives um, after surviving a traumatic, an abusive relationship. So we definitely are bringing attention and healing to women. So that's been one of the most amazing um, experiences of my life. So I'm definitely, definitely um, enjoying it. I was on the sideline at the Cowboys game, and I had a lady come up to me who was working the event, she had come to our event here in New Orleans, and she was just saying how how life-changing it's been for her, and she was so grateful. And it just made my day, because it, it was truly made me feel like a winner before we actually won, so that 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 was epic. Find her on Twitter at Survive in America, Survive in America, and also on Twitter at Heal Her Network, Annie Apple, who is the CEO of both of those joining us here on off the bench. Yeah, if you want to get involved in any of the events, email events at healhernetwork.org. Uh, so take me to Sunday night, Annie. Massive matchup <laughs> with the Cowboys. I mean, the the dome rocking. like That's the Superdome at its best. Uh, what, what, what kind of emotions were you feeling Sunday? You know, it was so weird because the weekend I had Dawn Elliott, uh, Ezekiel Elliott's mom. We're really best friends. Oh, wow. Uh, we've been friends since. We've been friends since Eli and Ezekiel were like high school kids. You know, they'd gone through com- camps together. They were on, they were uh, U.S. All American together. So, and then mm. went to Ohio State together. So, we've been friends since the boys were probably like 16 years old. So, she came down to for the weekend, and I had another friend who were all Cowboys fans. So, you know, we we did the whole French ministry. We did the whole, you know, everything, and they were just really feeling themselves. <laughs> 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 And, you know, you got to let the, of course, you're supposed to believe you're going to win. And that game was, you know, it, it, it was it was one of the most beautiful defensive games ever. Yeah. Um, and I was just so proud of how our guys kind of just stay the court. Um, and I love watching them play because you see that there's never panic. There's always support. And, and there's always this, this unity. You kind of, you can't fake that. That defense was just gelling like a symphony yeah. of sacks and stops and turnovers. So it was, you know, when it came down to the last one, winning that game was really epic. It was just everything. And just thinking about how Jerry Jones on Bourbon Street with a cocktail was <laughs> nice for him to take an L cocktail home. <laughs> so we definitely appreciated that. But that was one of the best. It, it was it was amazing. The fans were phenomenal. They were phenomenal in there. 
they were phenomenal. Like, yeah. Nobody, you weren't beating us in that, in that. Not with that defense, not with that fan. It wasn't happening. And, and, and so you're absolutely right, Andy. A great, a great weekend uh, for the defense. I, one thing that I've been kind of interested in watching you deal from afar is dealing with people <laughs> on the internet who oh, like God. to go after Eli Apple's mom on the internet for whatever reason. Time. Uh, I guess, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the haters on Twitter? You know, you, you just always remember how good God is. You know what I mean? I think for me, it's so important to know that what God says about you, what God thinks about you, is more important than what anybody else has to say or any, anyone else thinks. So you have to have a strong sense of who you are. Um, and you can't, you know, go through life, you know, trying to get people's acceptance. Because then, you know, I always say on, on Twitter, if you live by the acceptance of others, you would die by their rejection, right? So it's just, it's crazy. Unfortunately, it comes with the territory. It's all fans, you know, your kid has a good game, bad game, whatever game, they feel the need to tell you instead of going to tell their own mom, they want to tell Eli's mom. Um, so you just, you know, you, you deal with it. You ignore a lot of it. And, you know, you have fun with it when you can. Do you see the similarity between Jersey and NOLA? You know, as far as fans? More the people. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of good, like a little, I think, little culture. You know what? I think football is such a – football fans are different than, let's just say, basketball fans. And I think whether it's college, whether it's the NFL, you know, fans we understand are passionate. But I think you have to understand there's a line between passionate and just being a human. And I think many times people have so much vested in these games that they forget that these games are played by humans. Uh, who has humans as family yeah. and we need to remember the humanity <laughs> of, of people and you know and people forget that it's like who tweets somebody's mom insulting them it's, it's really just the weirdest thing that ever. is a low point i mean it's a bad yeah that's like, a low point does your life have to be <laughs> right. somebody's mother be pissed off at the quarterback's <laughs> mom of an nfl <laughs> especially someone as sweet as andy she's incredible <laughs> right. uh we're talking to andy apple at surviving america on twitter check out the heal her network at heal her network you mentioned you were cooking home cooked meals for eli all last week what's eli's yeah. favorite meal Eli likes, Eli, you know, we're African, right? I am, at least. And, you know, Eli born, born in Philadelphia, but he loves rice. Anything with rice. So I make, you know, all his favorite. He loves seafood. I make seafood. I make curry chicken. I make everything. But whatever I make, it has to always be accompanied by rice. So he's been rice having this week. He's had all cooked meal this week. I mean, so, he has to love the New Orleans cooking then, right? If he wants well, rice he, and seafood, I mean, that's us. Yes, he does, but he was like, I haven't had home-cooked meal in a while, so I, mean, so I felt all the mommy guilt, so I came and kind of, <laughs> you know, took care of that. I'm telling you, I make, literally Sunday, I had to go to his place and make him pregame meal. Wow, that's you know? really yeah. nice. Um, Annie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a bit forward here. Um, yeah. There are many of our listeners who have been texting in the show. Uh, they all find you to be very attractive, I would agree, and you're very bubbly. you got a great personality. You're just killing it online. I grew up with a very attractive mother myself. Uh, my <laughs> friends let me know that constantly. Jordy did as well, my co-host. Do you have any good stories that Eli's friends, were they ever crushing on you back in the day? You know what? Or today? <laughs> yeah, I mean, or like, yeah, like, or his teammates right now. Right? No, you know what? All his guys, I mean, I feel like I'm the mom. Like, I'm, I'm such a mom. And everybody, I don't even see myself as anything else but somebody's mom. And after the game, I'm like in, you know, where all the family get together. And I'm hugging everybody. And I'm just loving it. Because I see them all as my son. So if anybody feels anything else, they are not telling me. And Eli's not telling <laughs> me. You know? Eli, Eli's <laughs> so, but, holding it down. You know? But Eli, Eli's very protective. Um, but he also understands that his mom is awkward <laughs> and quirky. So, but no, I mean, it's... Let's say, if there are any rich oil guys out there, <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> at there you go. Her network. Hit her up. At Survive in America is where you can find Please Annie. Me up, all right? <laughs> hey, take me back to when yeah. uh, Eli was being recruited with college coach. You guys landed at Ohio State. What, what, what was it about? Because I imagine that you were probably pretty, um, you were probably pretty involved in the recruiting oh, process. Very, very involved. Very involved. You know, at the end of the day, he, he ended up with probably more than 20, um, you know, acceptance, you know, scholarships. That wanted him. And my only thing was, hey, just go somewhere where we can drive to. Because if anything ever happens to you, we need to be able to get to you right away. You know, because we have friends who kids went to Florida or different places. We were living in New Jersey at the time. What it made it really impossible. And, you know, it was very important that I am at every game. And Eli, 
first, he registered his first year. And I was at every single game during his registered year because parents, it's very important that your kid knows that whether he is on the field or not playing, that you are always going to stand by him. Don't wait till he's starting. Don't wait till his name is in the newspaper before you show up. Mm-hmm. You have to show up in the rest of your year. You have to show up when they're not playing because you really have to support them, the person, mm-hmm. not the persona. So it's very important. So when Eli, you know, his first offer came from Notre Dame. But I, you know, and, and Bob Diaco at the time was defensive coordinator. Loved him, but Brian Kelly, I did not care for. Mm, nice. you know, there was there was no room in the there was no space in the room because Brian Kelly's ego took up the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, yes. no, we're not doing this at all. Um, so so good. it was so funny because after Eli committed, Eli committed a whole year um, to Ohio State before he was supposed to. And I remember Bob Diaco sent him a handwritten letter. Was like, oh, you should really wait, wait, because I thought it was so cute that people still wrote handwritten letters. <laughs> but anyway, um, Eli decided Ohio State was just it was. Uh, Coach Tressel was, you know, was was a coach at the time, and I uh, went and went to Luke Fickle, and then before then Irving came. So it was always what I told Eli was like, okay, football aside, if something happens to you, is this a place you can see yourself attending school? And that's where the decision came to. And Ohio State is a great learning institution, and he had a great time there. You know, it wasn't easy. But we got it done. He got it done. And now he's playing with most of his teammates from college. Yeah, yeah okay. Wait, Ohio so State a, NFL down here. I was going to ask, <laughs> man. It's kind of crazy the amount of starters. And, like, the best players right now are kind of all Buckeyes. Uh, is there kind of an interesting little fraternity with all those guys and, and their me, families? They're, they're, they're like championship Buckeyes. You have to remember. Yes. This is championship yes. Buckeyes. Great call. Because Eli, Eli and JT were, root, were, were college roommates mm. first year. And then, you know, Von Bell, Eli, they're always, you know, like two old men out there, you know, <laughs> like they were always like old souls. <laughs> so to have him out there and, you know, then you have Marshawn and, and then it's Mike just, Thomas, it's, Mike Thomas, of course. Oh, my God. Mike Thomas and Eli would go at it at practice at Ohio State all the time. Wow. I told Mike Thomas after he got that big extension, he needed to give Eli about $42. <laughs> <laughs> Because him and Eli would go at it at practice. You know, there were like some, you know, training camps we got to see. And it was crazy. It was just crazy. But they are really very supportive of each other's career, very supportive of each other's success. So it's great to see them all on the same team. Annie, it's not just our listeners who have a huge crush on you. Our show does. Yeah, We'd love to make incredible. you a weekly guest. We have reached out to Courtney, your assistant. Whenever <laughs> you want to come on, you have an open invite. I know. I mean, I'm going to have to make my way to Baton Rouge one day. Yes, and- ma'am. You're See welcome. You guys, thank you so much for having me. Always. There she is, Annie Apple. Her on social media is the best. Survive in America or at Heal Her Network Chicago. She's coming up to see you in mid-October before the Saints get there on uh, on a Sunday afternoon. I believe it is October 19th. She will be there October 19th. And look, if you're a um, if you're a rich oil guy, I mean, you got, you got the end. That's what I'm saying. You got the end. Maybe just uh, hit her up. 